As a quick disclaimer before we get into the video, I'd like to remind you that we are adults. With that being said... <laughs> there are some games that just pop up out of the blue, offering a multiplayer experience that is so fun, so frantic and oh so addicting. Duck Game is exactly that game. Now meet the game that considers itself as Quake Meeting Duck Game. Game. Too many games. The point is, Arkshot is just that. Toted as an online bow FPS, Arkshot is as simplistic and as drawful as it gets. You're given a hooded man who quite frankly looks like the egg thief from Spyro. You're given a bow and you're given arrows. With the only limits being stamina and ammo, it's your job to jump, dash, fly and dodge your way about the arena while making sure all your friends give up their days of adventuring to become town guards. Arkshot is fun. It's really fun. And it's games like this that, strangely enough, make me rather salty. In an age where COD, Battlefield and Counter-Strike rule the FPS market, it's quick-paced, high-flying, stupidly built concepts such as Arkshot that make you despise the need to memorise spray patterns or Rush B. No weapon mods or team tactics, just you and the earliest range weapon man could invent past just chucking a fucking stone at a woolly mammoth or whatever they did. In terms of technical details and presentation, advanced fish AI this ain't. The cloth physics of the characters is non-existent and all the maps look as if they're from a portfolio of a 3D modeler fresh out of university. The sound is very minimal, save for the epic taunts, and the music can fade away while you're ham-fistedly trying to lunge through the air while turning your mate into a living, breathing pincushion. But it's games like this that hold themselves up on gameplay alone. The sheer concept of owning a bow an arrow quake style FPS is ingenious, a true credit to what the world of indie gaming can come up with. Not to mention the rush of utter joy you get from hitting a long range shot while both you and your target are mid-air. It's an accomplishment rivalled only by finding a quid in the sofa or making it through this life without getting bogged down in the crushing, inescapable regret from the transgressions you placed upon others. Yep, a truly wonderful feeling. However, the game is not faultless. For one, many deaths seem attributed to problems with player connection. Now, this blame shouldn't be placed solely upon the game itself, but those with poorer connections might find it a little tough. The main point of contention I have with the game, however, is the difficulty. This is a game with what we call a high skill ceiling. Learning arrow trajectories while moving and darting about is the key to staying alive and winning the matches. With the ability to dash and jump, coupled with the miraculous trick of arrow jumping, and I can't even begin to explain how that works, fluid motion while firing back is achievable. The game has a thought-provoking balance of stamina, which you need not only to sprint and dash to stay alive, but to draw back the power of your bow. So you must master the ability to stay on the move and also conserve your stamina for those powerful shots. And soon enough, you've mastered it. You're diving about, effortlessly ploughing arrows through your enemies while pouncing from the walls like a jungle cat loaded up on caffeine. And then your friends leave you. They're sick of you dominating every private game. They are tired of you being a complete tryhard. And so they leave, and you're left to face public players. You've taken everyone down, even the devs. You alone stand atop your peak as the king of Arkshot untouched in your total reign of the very specific eSport. And what then? No amount of 360 no scopes these cross-map headshots will bring your friends back. What I'm trying to say is, the game has a tendency to incite what a snobby amateur internet gaming critic might coin as a tryhardation. The state in which certain players over-practice a game to the point where playing with them is no longer entertaining. Now, I would like to point out that this is not specifically the game's fault, but the style in which the game presents itself means it's very vulnerable to cases of tryhardation. All in all, the various maps and game modes keeps things frenzied and fresh. A cheapy, but a goodie. Defo worth a look. You will like this game if you like Quake, Archery, and Arkshot receives an indie bin recommendation.